So I'm a bit nervous today because one of my objectives for this year was to harvest early baking potatoes and I kind of came up with a system that I was going to use um, to try and do it based on experience from a few years ago that was a bit of a freak um, experiment. So what I did a few years ago was I planted Charlotte potatoes which are just a second early and I planted those on April the 27th and I harvested them on I think it was the 8th of August and we got these lovely baking potatoes and Debbie really enjoyed them and she's a big fan of baking potatoes I'm not actually much of a fan of potatoes but she really loves them and the rest of the family do as well but in every other previous year in every other year we've never really managed it uh, we never repeated the Charlotte planted late uh, experiment um, and so we've always relied really on the main crop potatoes harvested you know the first batch of those in September and that means that we've really been without normally baking potatoes from probably May when we run out of the ones in store until September and that's a long time to be without something uh, that you really like. So this year I said to Debbie, I said, I'm going to try, I'm going to come up with a system to grow baking potatoes early. And so what I've done is I've done the same thing with Charlotte. I've also tried some Vivaldi, but rather than April the 27th, what I've done is I started them in the house in pots and just grow them into nice little plants, you know, something like this. And then I planted them out in one of my deep coal frames with a double cover. Uh, and fleece protection, you know, if it was frosty. And so they grew in a really nice, controlled, warm, sunny environment. Because here, so I planted them on March the 7th, I planted them out, I think, about the beginning of April. Now, April, May, and June are the sunniest three months for us in Lillam St. Hans. So I thought, yep, so they've got all the sunlight that they need. And so I gave them a bit more warmth by putting them under in the, this deep coal frame. Gave them a nice mix of nutrients, my normal mix, so that's um, Marshall's Organic Extra and Bloodfish and Bone Meal. Plenty of water. And then when they outgrew the coal frame, which inevitably they did, took the top off, but still protected them with fleece if there was a risk of frost. I, they had a little bit of frost damage on one of the worst nights in May. But other than that, they managed it. Um, so they came through, nice strong plants all the way through April, May and June, just coming to the end of June now. And so they've been, I think they're 16 weeks old, which is actually pretty old for a Charlotte. Um, not so, it's about right probably for Val Valdi. And so I'm gonna harvest them today. And as I said, I'm actually quite nervous because, you know, I put quite a bit of effort into this and it's actually quite meaningful for Debbie because she really likes baking potatoes and I kind of don't want to let it down. Um, so yeah, we're going to harvest them. Now, as it happens, we actually also grew some Aaron Pilot and we left those in quite a long time as well. And when we harvested those, they were really nice baking potato size, but I mean, they're long gone now. Um, so yeah, let's have a look. Okay, so that's the bed. And as you can see, <coughs> they're starting to look a bit ragged now. Um, so I'm just going to harvest them with my hands and harvest them into one of these big containers here. <laughs> here we go. Let's have a look. Oh, that's what I wanted to see. They are slightly smaller, maybe, but I mean, these are a nice size. Debbie doesn't mind smallish potatoes, smallish baking potatoes. Um, but uh, there's a possibility that there's more in here as well. Um, actually, I might, oh no, there's a few more. Whoa. Look at those, that's what I wanted. Now, yeah, that I think, no, there's another one. So big, which is what I wanted, but not a huge number. Oh, there's another one, not a huge number, but still, 
you know, pretty good. You never know until you weigh them, really, exactly how many you've got. I'll go back and hunt in a minute. So that's the first one. And I think that's Vivaldi. So here's the next one. Now this is also Vivaldi and that's not as exciting. I um, actually might put those on the ground so I can separate them. Basically the foliage just pulls straight out with no potatoes on it, so hmm, interesting. Let's see. Well and actually not still not too bad. Not too bad. Yes. That's what I want. Tiniest bit of scab on those and one of those. Not much. Just tiddlers. Kind of every time I see the tiddlers I think, no, that's not what we want, but not bad. So I'm not really sure, you know, how good this is as a way of um, getting a good yield. I mean I'm using a reasonably high value space, this coal frame, but it's only a metre square, so it's not a huge amount of land to sort of set aside for this experiment but it is um you know i could i suppose in april there's you know you're not getting a huge benefit for most things it's too early to plant things like courgettes and the like um but it's uh you know so so there's not many you know things like salads and beetroot and things like that they don't really benefit that much from cover at that time of year so uh, anyway, I think that one's pretty much done. So here they are. I am really pleased with these. I've got some real true baking potatoes here. And uh, yeah, a really good crop here. And so our first early main crops will be ready in the middle of August. And so there's easily enough here to keep us going for the next six weeks in baking potatoes. Obviously we've got plenty of uh, new potatoes as well. But uh, yeah, I am thrilled with those. So I'm gonna get them weighed. Although the objective here was not yield. It was large potatoes early in the season. Um, and because of that, I scrubbed off a lot of the chits. So I got a small number of large potatoes rather than just a large yield in general. But uh, yeah, I'm pleased. So that, I don't know what I've said. These are the Charlottes. Those are the Vivaldi. The Vivaldi are not as good. A little bit of scab on some of them. Uh, not quite as big as the Charlottes. So I'll definitely be doing it with the Charlottes uh, again next year. Just the same. It's probably the same date. So maybe slightly later, just a little bit, but not much. And I've basically got potatoes in pots ready to go back in there between now and October when I'll need the bed for uh, winter lettuce. The Charlotte's, so that's six kilos from three tubers. And what's that? 13 pounds? Three tubers, so really that's what you'd normally get from a 30 litre pot. And I think that's pretty close to uh, what I would get, what I'd be happy with for main crop potatoes really. So I've got to say, I'm, I was not thinking that the yield would be that great, but actually that's pretty nice. The Vivaldi, and it kind of stunned to see that this is actually even bigger yield. There was only two Vivaldi and three Char Charlotte tubers. And the Vivaldi is four kilos nine pounds four kilos from two tubers and that is i'm really really happy with that as i said i mean obviously that's not amazing for a, a main crop but it's still it's the beginning of july effectively and uh, my main crops are a long way away from uh, harvest so yeah fantastic so this is what we ended up with 
These are the Charlottes, these are the Vivaldi. Um, these are the ones that I'm saving because they're a little bit green uh, for next year. Those are the rejects, and those are just the uh, ordinary sized potatoes. This is how we store the potatoes that we're using. So we store them in those cardboard boxes underneath this fleece. So they're so easy to get access to. Um, nice and dark and dry, but there is moisture can pass through the fleece. Uh, it's just a lot easier than sacks. Although we will store potato potatoes we're not using yet in the sacks. Wow, I am really pleased with that result. And I absolutely love growing potatoes, even though I don't eat them. Um, and I love trying to find new ways. And obviously I do, do almost all my potatoes in containers. I really like doing it in containers. Um, but I thought, well, yeah, let's just try an alternative. And I think, you know, it's been so successful that that's the biggest yield that I've ever had from a second early potato. And not only that, but they're just a fantastic size. Um, and you know true baking potato size although some of them are on the small baking potato size but Debbie just has two of those so but they're you know really nice size um, perfect condition and so easy to grow and in a time as I said when I'm not really using those hotbeds to maximum advantage um, because for all the cold winter crops they don't need the protection and for the hot weather crops, it's still too cold for them. So potatoes, just kind of one of those intermediate level crops that actually really does benefit uh, from, from the extra bit of protection in April and early May. Um, and yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm so pleased. And I'm sure Debbie is gonna be absolutely thrilled because that will see us through now, all the way through, all through June into August. And it really makes a difference uh, to her to have them. I mean, that's one of the things about being self-sufficient is that, you know, kind of come about, as I said, May time when we run out of the potatoes in store and then she's got no real baking potatoes until, in this, in this case, we got them, I think about the beginning of May, but only a hand, you know, only 10 or something like that. Uh, and so here, I don't know how many we've got there, but you know, 30 or so. Um, so really, really nice. Um, I hesitate to say that I've now got a system that I'd recommend to everybody else. So I'm umming and ahhing about putting a, a title on this video of how to grow early baking potatoes, because I hate doing that until I've done something two or three years running. Um, but it's been such a good success that I think I might, uh, I might even push myself out of my comfort zone and actually recommend people try it. Um, it's been a good system for me. And uh, as I said, it really helps on the payback for those big, deep coal frames, which, um, you know, actually, th th I think they took nearly a year to pay back. We never do anything uh, unless it pays back really within a year or so. Um, we just can't afford to do that sort of thing. But anyway, it's, um, yeah, so really does help with the payback. So I'm looking forward to planting my next batch and then my winter lettuces. Anyway, for now, my name's Steve. This is the Seaside Allotment Channel and I'll see you soon.